My best friend and I thought about only two things that summer. Flying and falling in love. And when you're in love, you make promises. Welcome everyone to the 18th episode of Taki Soba with our special Valentine's Day review of the romance film The Place Promised in Our Early Days. I'm the casual anime watcher Nate, as always, here with the anime enthusiast Malesh. The Place Promised in Our Early Days is the very first feature film made by Makoto Shinkai, who has recently become a lot more well known due to his recent film from 2016 being the highest grossing anime film of all time. I liked this first feature film of his, but I felt it was pretty weak and disjointed. I agree with Nate with how weak the place promised in our early days was. I've seen Shinkai's other works, and they blow this film out of the water. Now let's talk about one of the most complicated stories in a film about love. The place promised in our early days was released on November 20th, 2004, and is a dramatic romance film with elements of military sci-fi. I found the primary plot a little hard to follow and was confused at points. In an alternate reality, Japan is split into North and South with each half being occupied by either the Soviet Union or the USA. Two young men and their mutual female love interest live in northern Japan and are fascinated by a tower that was constructed by the Soviets, which is later found to be replacing nearby parts of the Earth with parts from parallel worlds. I love this sort of sci-fi, but this particular plot wasn't delivered with the best pacing or very well explained all the way through. Amako Shinkai films share the importance of romance as a theme. You see this was a place promised in our early days, and beyond all the zany sci-fi stuff, there is a romance plot revolving our main character Hiroki and his lover Sayuri. My problem with this film is that it does a really bad job of blending sci-fi with romance. The romance was a more important aspect, but for some reason it has this complicated plot that doesn't add much value. It almost feels like Shinkai combined two anime into one film. Overall. There was some stuff I liked about the story, but it quickly falls apart with how odd it gets later on in the film. The main trio of characters in this film are Hiroki, a shy student, Takia, a smart guy and Hiroki's best friend, and Sayuri, a mysterious girl that both guys end up falling in love with in middle school. With the film not entirely focusing on these characters' relationships, it caused the development of them to stagnate. I would say from the beginning of the film to the end, the main characters hardly change, with the end result being Hiroki becoming slightly more brave. There is potential in having an interesting love triangle with fleshed out characters in a place promised in our early days, but it does not come to fruition at all. I would agree that the love triangle trope could have been used well, but it was hardly used at all, and the character development just really was unfulfilling. The background characters didn't have any development, and while they did move the plot forward, they just weren't used interestingly. I also felt that despite the main characters growing up early in the film, there is little meaningful moments when the two young men Hiroki and Takia come together after years apart. Sayuri had some very minor backstory, but her contribution to the plot was too utilitarian, and she got a lackluster conclusion in my opinion. Makoto Shinkai's personal studio, Comix Wave Films, animated A Place Promised in Our Early Days, and they did a dynamite job on it. In general, Comix Wave is filled with amazing animators and make every film look stunning, like Garden of Words. The art style is from a signature Shinkai, with unique art designs that made me think of a more mature Ghibli art style. This film came out in 2004, and holds up especially well for that time period. I think that the art style was the best part of this film, especially the background art and the still shots. Cinematography wasn't mind-blowing, but during many of the pan shots, the landscapes were very detailed and nice to look at. The animation itself was also quite good, and I was impressed with the added touches of realism and charm. I personally watched A Place Promised in Early Days in English and felt content about it. For the most part, the voices fit with the characters, and in particular, there weren't any characters that I thought were miscast. The performance still could have been better, which would have made the characters feel more alive than they did. As for the soundtrack, I liked it being mostly classical music. I also watched the dub and felt it was just about neutral. Certain characters were able to express some drama, but not a wide range of it. It was somewhat stiff. I agree that the actors needed more liveliness, but the script was still decent at least. As for the soundtrack, it didn't stand out much to me, but it was still pleasant, and I'd call it a safe choice. To wrap things up, 
I have to say, I still like this film a little, but I have to admit, it was pretty weak. I also have to admit, I had to read a plot summary after watching it, because I just didn't understand or misunderstood some odd parts. I love sci-fi, but this just wasn't engaging, even with an interesting premise. For a movie that also meant to focus on romance as a primary theme, it's not good at all in that aspect. Since Makoto Shinkai is much more highly regarded after his most recent film, I think that if you love that, and or all of his other works, this is worth watching just to see how his first film came out. If you don't have that specific desire to watch this film, then I don't recommend it. The Place Promise in Our Early Days is an okay film that I would only say to watch if you want to watch all of Shinkai's films. Otherwise, just watch 5 centimeters per second or Garden of Words, as they're way better films in every aspect. Shinkai learned a lot about what worked and didn't after A Place Promise in Our Early Days. It wasn't a total waste of time for me, but still my least favorite thing I watched for Tagi Soba, period. You can only stream the subtitle version of this film. It's on Crunchyroll, but only in standard definition 480p. The Blu-ray and DVD are available on Amazon, but expensive. If you want to use illicit free streaming sites, you can still find the dub or sub very easily in high quality. As always, if you've already watched the plays from us in our early days, click the first link in the description for our post view discussion, which includes some light spoilers. Thanks for watching our review of The Blaze Promise in Her Early Days. Please give it a like or comment for feedback. We'll see you guys next time with our review of Oran High School Host Club. Ciao! Ciao.